So good morning and hello from Mumbai, India. So you can see the grounds of the hotel that I'm staying at. Looks like they're building something there. There's a park across the street and lots of tall buildings. And uh, yeah. This is one world center over there. But uh, welcome to Mumbai. Yeah. So it's the first time in India, sir? Uh, in India, no. In India, no? no? My third. Mumbai, Mumbai, yes. In my Mumbai, first time in Mumbai, yes. First time in Mumbai. So, how's the hotel? It's good? Fancy? It's good. Yeah. Very nice, yes. Okay, we're able to sleep well. Okay, great. So, today we are going to have a South Mumbai tour. Okay. okay. The places which we are going to visit are all in the south of Mumbai. Okay. So, we are going to start from uh, the gateway of India. Perfect. Okay. And in the end, we are going to end our tour at Dobi Ghat. So Dobi Ghat will be the last place of our tour. Mm -hmm. Also, in between our tour, if you guys want to go anywhere, like a break or lunch or maybe washroom mm -hmm. or maybe uh, any anywhere which is on like on the way mm -hmm. of the tour, okay. uh, I will make the changes and we'll do it okay. if it is on the way. Perfect. Okay. And uh, the tour. Like almost like six hours, okay. but it all depends upon the traffic of Mumbai. Okay. Today is Monday, so I think we are going to find traffic on the street some places. But the good part is we are already in the south, mm. so I think we are going to avoid some part of traffic. But still, because we are in Mumbai and today is Monday, so there will be some traffic. Okay. Okay. No and also, as you know, that the festivals are going on in the city. Oh yeah, it's the end of the... Today is the last day, yes. Mm -hmm. It's called Navratri, a yeah. festival of uh, Hindu goddess. So the Hindu people worship goddess for the nine days. Okay. Okay, in the temporary shrines which we make on the streets of Bombay. Also, different parts of India. So today is the last day, today is the ninth day. In evening, it's going to be much more crowd, much more rush. Because tomorrow, tomorrow is the day when we take that statues and emerge in the in the water so tomorrow is the last day uh, okay so yes so now we are driving towards the gateway of india you know uh, we say that if you come to india you cannot miss the gateway of india because <laughs> if you if you do it that means your tour is incomplete you should come back and do it again because gate of india is one of the most visited tourist attraction in the city when we go there, you will find yourself only that how busy the place is. Rest, all the places which we are going to visit in the tour are not as busy as the Gateway of India. So it is one of the most visited tourist attractions in the city. Also, the Starbucks is uh, close to the Gateway of India. So okay. we'll go to the Gate of India and we'll go to the Starbucks. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> I love how it was included in yes. the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> so we can now say that we've been to India because we're yeah. able to no. go to the gate of India. Yes. In India, we have two gates, like one in Delhi and one in Mumbai. Have you been to Delhi? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, okay. In Delhi, there is a gate called India Gate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if India comes first and gate comes second, <coughs> that's in Delhi. Mm -hmm. But if gate comes first and India comes second, that's in Mumbai. So the one in Mumbai called Gateway of India. Gateway of India. And the one in Delhi called India, India Gate. Gate. Interesting. So the one in Delhi is a war memorial. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the one in Mumbai, this was built by the British to welcome <coughs> the King George V and Queen Mary. So I'll tell you the whole story when we when we go there. So now we are driving towards uh, the end of the south which is called Kolaba the place is called Kolaba, Kolaba where we are driving now and this place where we are this place is called Lalbagh okay Lalbagh and uh, this place is famous for you know uh, just few like I think a month ago a month ago mm -hmm. in Mumbai there was a very famous festival 
called uh, Ganesh Chaturthi. It's a festival of a Hindu god, Lord Ganesha, you know, the god with the elephant head. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, we bring the statue of Lord Ganesha uh, and we put on the on the streets. We we, we, uh, we make a temporary shrines on the streets and we make and we put the shrine the statue in the shrines. Okay. So this place is famous because of uh, the Lalba uh, Ganesha, Lalba Ganpati. Like almost like thousands of people, I think more than thousands, like millions of people visit this place in these 10 days just to take a worship, you know, blessings of Lord Ganesha in this place. So this place is also famous for the spices. Oh. Lalbagh is famous for spices. So you yeah. see a market area, you see on the left hand side, this market is famous for spices, <laughs> then uh, fish, there's a fish market over here as well. You see a cow on the street as well. <laughs> <laughs> They're everywhere. Yeah. But the good part of uh, Mumbai is you will not see a cow uh, like walking on the street, especially in the south of Mumbai. You will not find a cow walking on the streets alone. So whenever you see a cow, you'll always see a cow taker, like the owner of the cow, who is with the cow always. Because, you know, if the cow is walking alone, and if the cow hits the car, or maybe if there's an accident or something, so the government you know people will come they'll take the cow and you'll not get the cow back so <laughs> just to take care of the just to take care of your cow and you just, can't get it back yeah so just take care of the cow and just take care of the people over here for the safety purpose oh, they're <laughs> safety purpose the cow owner always the cow owner always walk with the cow is it getting popular to use like a driverless that driverless car it's not as not so much yet okay. they're working on it so you are from which country, sir? I'm from the Philippines. Philippines? Yeah. It's from the US. Which part of the US do you live, sir? Uh, South Carolina. Uh-huh. The good thing is I have never heard about the name. <laughs> the I southern have... part of the US. Okay. So this is I know. <laughs> Second day, yes, we arrived Second yesterday, okay. and then we'll go back today. <laughs> You're going back tour. today? Yeah. Okay, so what time your flight is? No, we, uh, we're we working in Pune. In Pune, you're going to Pune then? Yes, okay. yes, we've been in Pune for several weeks. Okay, okay. So you're like, this trip is like a business trip? Uh, not this, okay. we're just uh, sightseeing today. Okay. But uh, yeah, Pune is a business trip, yeah. I do, yes. You like the spicy or non-spicy? I love spicy. You like spicy? Spicy, yes. Spicy. Any of your favorite dish which you tried uh, in Mumbai, maybe? Um, what is uh, like something that you can recommend, like, you know, Mumbai is known for? Uh, Mumbai is very famous, especially for the street foods, actually. Uh, you know, uh, McDonald's. McDonald's is very popular in America. It's an American, actually, outlet, mm-hmm. fast food outlets. So in Mumbai, we have our own uh, McDonald's. It's mm-hmm. called uh, Wada Pav actually. It's a local dish which looks like a burger, but it's a veg burger, like a veg burger. Mm-hmm. It's made of uh, potatoes. They, we take our potatoes and we boil it. Okay. okay. After boiling potatoes, we fry the potatoes in a pan with some, with some spices on it. And uh, later, when it's cold, we make a ball of it. After making a ball of that uh, potatoes with the spices, we deep fry in oil mm. and give a golden shape. Mm-hmm. Once it's a golden shape, we serve with uh, bread and mm. some tamarind chutneys on it. So it's like it's called vada pav. It's a very popular dish in Mumbai. Invented and started in Mumbai, and now it's very popular in all over India. So you can find vada pav all over India, but the taste you find in Mumbai, you'll not find anywhere else in uh, in India. So we'll try vada pav somewhere, some good place. We'll. See if we, if we find Wadapa, we'll try some Wadapa as well. On the left hand side, you see this uh, Udyan. It, say, it says Jija Mata Udyan, but inside there is two things. First is the museum, okay. okay, which is very popular and the first museum in Mumbai. It's called Dr. Bhauji Lad Museum. Dr. Bhauji Lad Museum is the new name. The older name was Victoria Albert Museum. Oh, 
Ah, Korean queen. Okay. Yes. Or Prince. So this is the, the uh, like this place is the one where we have Victoria Albert Museum, which is renamed now, and the new name is Dr. Bhauji Lard Museum. This museum is mostly famous for uh, about Mumbai. So inside, if you go inside, they have two floors. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, they have uh, statues of you can say Queen, uh, Queen Victoria. Also, you'll see about uh, Hindu religion. Okay. Uh, not just Hindu religion, but also about the cultures we have in India. This is Saint Gloria Church on the left hand side. Saint Gloria Church, which was built by the Portuguese. So it's a Portuguese uh, church in uh, mm -hmm. Bombay. You know, everyone knows actually that uh, British ruled India for almost 250 years. But before the British, it was the Portuguese who arrived in India and lived in Bombay for several years before it goes to the British. So the so they, they had a fight, so the British no, no, was able no, no, to no. take over? No, no, no. So neither the Portuguese has fought someone to to get Bombay and uh -huh. or neither uh, the British fought the Portuguese. So what happened, I will tell you. During the older time when uh, the Mughals, you know, the Mughals were ruling uh, India, most mm -hmm. of the part of India, so they were having multiple fights against uh, the king of Gujarat and uh, against the king of India, you know, multiple uh, states in the south of India. <coughs> so when they were start losing, uh, losing the kingdoms everywhere, what they did is just to have some support, you know, like uh, support because they were knowing very well that no one will support from India to them because they're the Mughals, they're from outside mm -hmm. of India. So when the Portuguese arrived in the India for the first time, just to get their support for themselves, they, the Mughals, you know, they gave Bombay as a gift to the Portuguese as a friendship. Okay, okay as a bond of friendship. <laughs> so Portuguese got Bombay as a friendship from Mughals and later in the year 1661, 1661, when the British prince arrived in Bombay for the first time, he married to a Portuguese king's daughter, the Catherine of Vegenza. Catherine, okay. And he received all the seven islands of Bombay as a dowry. <laughs> so Bombay was given as a wedding gift by the Portuguese to the British. So it is one of the most expensive wedding gift, or you can say one of the most expensive dowry. Mm -hmm. Till now, given by anyone to anyone. <laughs> yeah, giving someone a city. Yeah. So Bombay was a group of seven islands, seven different islands, which was all, all under control of Portuguese and given by the Portuguese to the British. So in 1661, when the British prince got all the seven islands as a dowry, as a gift, he was not knowing what to do with the island. So in the year 1668, he gave all the seven islands to the British. East India Company on lease. So when the British East India Company got Bombay on lease for just 10 sterling pounds a year, that's it. That was the amount they need to pay every year. Because Bombay was surrounded with water, the islands were surrounded with the water and the water is Arabian Sea. So they find it very easy for import and exports of goods from Bombay to any other parts of India or from Bombay to UK and this is the reason why the British East India Company make Bombay as a headquarter, okay. as a base and that's how the British uh, East India Company control Bombay and then the other parts of India too. So everyone knows that as I said British rule India for 250 years but in reality it's not uh, uh, 250 years by the British government but almost like from the from the year 1668 till the year you can say 1854 it was like almost like in the control of British East India Company okay for the first time when the India independent movement started you know when the Indian people start asking for freedom mm -hmm. it was not against the British government but it was against the British company mm -hmm. so the Indian people were asking freedom from the British company so what happened is when the protest become violent, the British government took the power under the control. So what happened is 
the company has no more power okay. and the power has been shifted from the company to the queen crown so now the queen victoria became the new head when the protest started and later when people start against the protest against the <coughs> queen as well then in 1947 we got the independence so it was come like total 250 like total 250 years but almost like 150 years it was under control of the company now this place where we are driving sir this bridge where we are now on the top of the bridge this bridge is called jj jj flyover which is built by the british it's more than 100 years old bridge or was built by the british actually on your on your right side left side as a big you see you see this old buildings old houses This place where we are driving now. Now you can see some upcoming new buildings over yeah. here. But this is one of the most oldest neighborhood of Bombay. Now it's Mumbai, but earlier it was Bombay. So what was it changed? Like what happened to uh, Bombay actually, sir, to Mumbai? The name, the name was changed in the year 1996. 96. 96. Yes. Okay. So it's almost 27 years now. We changed it from Bombay to Mumbai, and it was <coughs> done by a local political party from the state of Maharashtra. called shiv sena okay so they are the one who actually forced the government and passed the bill in the parliament to change the name of the city from bombay to mumbai so the name bombay was given by the british it's a british name and bombay means good bay or you can say beautiful bay the name from the sea from the arabian sea but later on in the year 96 when we changed the name from bombay to mumbai the name mumbai is derived from a temple in mumbai we have lots of temples actually but a very famous temple called mumba devi it's a mm. temple of a hindu goddess so the name mumba is taken from a temple name and the letter alphabet i at the end is been added to make one name called mumbai so do you know the meaning of mumbai what it means no no, no. so mumbai means mother mother Yes. If you break down the alphabets of Mumbai, <coughs> the first three alphabet is M U M. Mm, okay. Mum in English yeah. it means mother. Yeah. The other two alphabet is B A B A in Gujarati, it means mother, and the last alphabet I in Marathi it means mother. So it's all three so, mothers. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> so the whole meaning of Mumbai is mother. Okay. Mumbai means mother. The name it's from the picture. the name from the temple. Wow. It's similar to like the Dubai uh, the soup in Dubai. Yes. Yes. So we have a very small portion over here for vegetables also. Okay. This is this side. It's very nice. Very small portion of vegetables over here. This side. Because most of the vegetable has moved out from here, the vegetable sellers have moved out from here. They are not selling more vegetables over here, but we have still few shops remaining. This is famous for clothes and fabrics. And second, and third one, sorry, the third one is called the Bari Bazaar. It is famous for jewellery. These markets are open after 12 o'clock. Uh huh. Yes. This is like a bomb shelter. Yes, yes. And a TV screen. <laughs> yeah. Okay, where did he go? Oh, that way. Yes, yes.
This is the nicest Starbucks I've ever seen. This is so nice. This is the Starbucks in Mumbai, India, across the street from the Taj Hotel. And that's my friend Neil. And this is absolutely awesome inside. And they have an amazing selection of mugs. So maybe, maybe I will get some, but this is incredible. So it's like an Indo-Islamic. From outside it looks like a Hindu architect, but yeah. from inside it looks like a Hindu These are the fairies. The city where I live is like this. With the The name is yet not changed to Mumbai. It's still Bombay High Court. And the building also comes under the World Heritage Site declared by UNESCO. It's again a UNESCO Heritage Site. Mumbai is the only city in India, sir, which has the five heritage sites declared by UNESCO within the city. And that's Bombay High Court, Universities, Prince of Wales Museum, Victoria Station, and then we have a had launched a new trains. We don't have uh, bullet trains in India, mm -hmm. but very soon we are going to have a bullet train. Mm -hmm. I can just imagine like because how big the country is, yes. you really need a train. So we, we're going to have a bullet train very soon, but as of now we do have a high speed trains. Is there a train that connects Mumbai to Delhi? That's Yes, we do have. How yeah, long will we, that trip uh, be? If you go by train from Mumbai to Delhi, it takes around uh, 24 to 26 hours. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So it's not that fast, but very soon we're gonna have some high speed minutes. trains yeah. which will take lesser than this, like lesser than 24 hours. No, but if it's just like you know, just a but, tourist, but then, you know, you just wanna see the country. But again, yes. so going in a train for like 24 hours, when you go in a train to anywhere like outside Mumbai, mm -hmm. it takes like 24 hours, maybe three days, sometimes 48 hours also, depends upon the distance. Yeah. Okay. So it's like you're making some good friends in the train. <laughs> so it's like, you know, like a good vacation, you're making some friends, going with a group of people. These are some old British buildings. The building on your left, sorry, on the right side, that's government hospital. Actually. Which one? The one, this one. This it's a side, hospital? It's in a hospital, the government hospital. Oh, look at that. Anymore, like the building is still there, but it's not in use yeah. as of now. 
So the buildings are converted into hospitals, uh, universities, high courts, then schools, colleges, government buildings, government offices, banks. like the one or being oh, used in a more modern we had uh, replaced it with the modern one we used to have the older one without air condition open mm -hmm. windows open doors but now they replace it so the old one is not functioning anymore okay we replace it with the air conditioned one okay, i mean even the styles it looks like the one in the British London. the one on your right side that's the touch bank the white touch building bank. on the right side yes yeah, touch bank i love this place here yeah, just walk These are, so are the buildings on your right side some are like schools, some are churches, some are government buildings. Yeah, right there. And in the front, straight in the front, that's yes. the Victoria Station. The first train station in India by the British. Victoria Station. Yes, Victoria Station. It used but to be called as Victoria, but now it's called Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Terminal. A big <laughs> Indian name. <laughs> so it's no more called as Victoria Terminal, but yes, there are people who still call it as VT, which means Victoria VT. Terminals. Where are we going? VT. That's, oh. This is VT. This is where we are now. So if you were going to take a train somewhere yeah. in India, you would come here. Uh, not just in India. Like even if you want to go, like within Mumbai also, anywhere, you can come and take a train from here. Mm. In Mumbai, this is the main. I mean, this is one of the main train stations. Okay. We have we have some more as well, but this is one of the main train stations, and this is the first train station in India. Oh, this in, is the subway? Yes. To go oh. inside the train station. So it's connected the subway and the train station. That's, as well. oh, that's nice. So this train station was built by the British in 1888. The construction was started in 1878. It took around 10 years to build this train station. This is a copy of St. Pancras train station in London. Oh, okay. So in London, there's a train station called St. Pancras. Now the St. Pancras train station has been renovated, so you will not find the similarity anymore. Mm -hmm. But if you see the old picture of St. Pancras, you will find the similarity between this train station and St. Pancras mm -hmm. train station. Yes. Under the clock, that empty space. Oh yes. Yes. Because this was the statue of Queen Victoria. <laughs> so we, we removed the statue of Queen Victoria. Oh. It's kept in the museum in Mumbai. That There's is no funny. No more statue of Queen Victoria over here. She was removed. Mm. Yeah. And so we are going to get down here so that you can have some good pictures. <laughs> All of the memories. <laughs> All right, Neil, get some good pictures. Yes, I'll, I'll be here. Okay, I got you. This is the view. Oh, this buildings wow. you see over here, these are all the Art Deco buildings on the left side. Mm, left side, right. the buildings you see, these are all the British mm -hmm. time buildings built by the British from 1920s to 1940s, in 20 years of time. These buildings are called the Art Deco. Nice. After Miami, Mumbai has the second biggest Art Deco in the world. I didn't know that. And this drive on the left side, this marine drive, uh -huh. this was built by the British. It's a handmade drive by the British. Mm -hmm. No, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. So it's very hazy right now, but during a night time, this view is also called as Queen's Necklace View. Queen's yeah, I've seen that. So what, what was it called? Queen Necklace. Queen's Necklace. Queen's Necklace because it's a C shape, the half of the circle. The water in the front is the Arabian Sea. Oh. The water in the front, that's Arabian Sea. Okay. And uh, it's a C shape. So during a night time, oh, okay. if you see this place, when the street lights are on, it's all a yellow light, it looks like a diamond peels on a necklace. 
mm. from the elevator point and that's why it's called Queen's Necklace View. The construction work going on over here is to is for the coastal road. So the construction is almost completed actually. It's going to be open by the end of this year. This road is going to be open by the end of this year for the people. And then this marine drive portion which is closed right now is going to be open for the people again. So the coastal road goes up to where? Uh, this coastal road will go up to like to marine uh, sorry Haji Ali and then there's a, there's a bridge it is going up to go towards the north of Mumbai.
Oh my. Yes, yes. Hello, how are you? Very nice. Okay, we are here in Gandhi's home. My
They finally found the old woman who lives in a shoe. So let's do one thing, sir. Mm -hmm. I will give you the car, the key. You drive to Pune. <laughs> okay, oh, we'll, we'll take the car. <laughs> we'll send a message when we, and let you know where we park it. <laughs> Today, uh, as I said, today is the last day of the festival actually. Mm -hmm. So it's called, today is the last day and uh, the politicians, you, see, you saw the flag also, you know. Mm -hmm. So today they are going to have a, they're going to have a rally actually on the streets with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And that's why in the evening the traffic and crowds are much more crazier actually. And, and in Mumbai, sir, the taxi drivers, they stop anywhere to take the guests <laughs> to sit inside. So that's also a problem. This is the reason actually why we don't have the tuk-tuks in the in the south. Oh yeah. You cannot see the tuk-tuk here. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because yeah. we already have a taxi drivers who are very crazy. And if you allow the tuk-tuk the tuk -tuk, the tuk -tuk drivers also, they are the super crazy ones. <laughs> you cannot just allow two crazy people in the same place. So that's why we don't have the tuk-tuk in the south. No tuk -tuk. So no tuk-tuk in the south. It's only in the north. <laughs> I didn't. I just realized they're not here. Yeah, when you mentioned like, yeah, exactly. There's no tuk tuk. So if you want to recognize which part of the city you are, just see you on the streets. If you see tuk tuk, that means you are in the north. <laughs> if you don't see tuk tuk, that means you are in the south. But there's tuk tuk in Pune. So. Yeah, tuk tuk in Pune. In Mumbai also we have tuk tuk, but only in the north of Mumbai. In north of Mumbai. Oh, yeah, near the airport. Near the airport. Ah, okay. Yeah. okay. But not in the south. I can just imagine the chaos yeah. with Tuk Tuk and Taxi at the That's same true. time. <laughs> you know, they, if, the bo if both of them start stopping anywhere on the streets and making <laughs> people stay inside, it will mm. be like crazy traffic everywhere. Now, on your left side, you see it's, it's a golf course. You play mm -hmm. golf? I don't. No, I do not. It's a rich man's sports club. Yeah. <laughs> Only That's why I don't play it. <laughs> Only for rich people. It's a British club built by the British. It's called Wellington, Wellington Golf Club in Mumbai. So we have two golf clubs. This is the small one on your left side, mm -hmm. and then we have a bigger one on the right side. Oh, okay. So this one, on the, the bigger one is on the right side. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mumbai is we have taxis and tuk-tuks and both run on meters. Okay. 
So like it's not compulsory that you have to bargain with them and mm -hmm. you know decide the price. It's good you can just tell him they go with the meter and whatever the meter is I will pay you. But yes, sometimes some taxi drivers go round and round so it's better you know the routes where you're going yeah. and how far it is. So you, you should always check on the Google map before you go. So you know the time, exact time, how much time it takes actually. And if they're taking the correct route, then it's fine. Then it's, then it's fine. If it is, if it's taking a longer route, it is, you can just tell him that. Okay, I can see that you are taking a long route. Then he will say you that oh, there's a traffic and blockage. You will take more time, same place. Oh, blah blah blah, and then he will win. So <laughs> never argue with a taxi driver. Yeah. <laughs> And Uber is still popular here, right? Yes, but the problem with the Uber driver in Mumbai is that most of the Uber drivers are new. So they are not very much familiar with the roads and routes over here. Mm -hmm. They go with the Google Maps, the Google Maps says take right, they will take right, <laughs> if there, even if there is no right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem with the Uber over here. <laughs> Drive into the wall. You know, if you want to drive towards the Gate of India, just put on Google Gateway of India. And if you see, if you see, the Gateway of India is in the Arabian Sea. <laughs> so how will you go there? <laughs> the you driver will take the car in the sea. You take the, you drive the car into the ferry. Yeah. So it's better take the, take someone who knows the routes and does not stop everywhere to you know just keep asking where to go, where to go. The problem with the Google Map is like if you want to drive far, far away, the Google Map will go very smoothly mm -hmm. till you reach the destination. Once you reach closer to your destination, then it starts confusing. So this is the problem with the Google Maps. Yeah. Same thing in Manila, so like in the Philippines, because there it's not updated. Like usually, you know, um, they will change the rules. Like you know, this is only for left turn and right turn, and Google Maps is not updated. That's true. And also the problem in Mumbai, as I said, the constructions are going on everywhere in the city, mm -hmm. and the government people, they, even like today night, like it's working now. This road is is open. But tonight they will close it, yeah, yeah. and then you have to go on from the other side. Even like for how, like you know, in one night we cannot update the Google Map, <laughs> so this is also a problem with the Uber drivers. But yes, we have Uber is famous in Mumbai also. It's popular in Mumbai, but taxis are more popular mm -hmm. because people trust the taxi drivers because at least they know the routes. They know the route. They know the way. Yeah, where to go. This is what I need right here. <laughs> to go to Pune? Yes. I will ride in the couch uh -huh. in the back of the truck. Uh -huh. Okay, so maybe let's talk to this guy. Maybe if he's going to Pune. <laughs> Neil, you can sit in the chair. Other, yeah. <laughs> there is no air con, but, no, but fine. Yeah. maybe you it's... You don't need air con, oh, look actually. At look at that. <laughs> you don't need air con, you know? Maybe if you stop too fast, it will fly out. <laughs> yes, if you put the emergency brake, then you will fly out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then I will not go to Pune. Can you go to the hospital? <laughs> the couch will be in the street with me. Uh... So on the left hand side, we have a Mahalakshmi train station. Okay. The train station called Mahalakshmi. This is like a stop or like a yes, station? A train station, a local train station. And this is the place where we are going to get down to see the laundry place. Uh, so this is our last uh, stop in our tour. We'll get down from the left side. Okay. 